My name is Mohanad Rawanda, Executive Director of Al-Bustan Seeds of Culture. Fortunate enough to be sharing my time, Phil Bait, with Joseph Fahim. Joseph Fahim is an Egyptian film columnist, programmer, and lecturer. He is the Arab delegate for the Carlo Vivari International Film Festival. His writings have been published in seven languages. He is about to generously offer us a peering view into Arab cinema. What have you seen in 2020 that the rest of us may look forward to in 2021, yeah, Joseph? Happy New Year, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me. 2020 was a very difficult year for cinema in general, and uh, of course, Arab, uh, Arab cinema in particular, simply because many of the films that were awaiting their day in the sun and were waiting to premiere uh, among major audiences, many of them um, struggled to do that. And some of the films that premiered in film festivals are still waiting to see by a wider audience and they're hoping to do that this year. Some of the films that we're about to discuss are some of my favorite films from this year that I think amounts to a very remarkable and very diverse selection of films uh, that touches upon different uh, genre and different sentiments in, um, in Arab cinema. On top of the list is Ismail Iraqi's um, Zenka Contact. Zenka Contact is a big punk romance about a fading rock star uh, who comes back to his hometown of Casablanca to face his demons and falls in love with a prostitute. And um, what results is a big, body, garish, outrageous romance that simply defies what we expect and see from the Arab world. Uh, highly apolitical, refreshingly so, and with big emotions and amazing music in it, is certainly the most entertaining Arab movie of the year. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a massive crowd pleaser all over the world. I'm Afraid to Forget Your Face is a movie that made history in 2020 by becoming the very first Egyptian film to win the Palm to win Cannes Palm Dirt for best short film. And it's a remarkable movie in every in every sense. Um, a very intimate story of a young working class boy, teenager, who uh, tries to find or who goes to a great strength and great measures to uh, say goodbye to his former lover. The movie in its very intimate setting becomes something much bigger. It's a very small and short panorama of an entire generation that has been born in the wake of a failed revolution. It also captures Cairo in a way that we rarely see in the movies. The hustle, the bustle, the claustrophobia, and the bustling noise. Um, it's a movie that is heartbreaking and beautiful, and with several festivals already in the bag, it's about to make major waves this year. A very different film from the other two is uh, a very intimate documentary by um, new filmmaker Lina Suilam. It's called Dear Algeria. And um, Dear Algeria is a very intimate account of uh, the director's grandparents who decides after many, 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 many years of marriage to get a divorce. In this intimate family portrait lies a um, very subtle and very powerful study of the entire generation of, of Algerians who immigrated to France and who were spent most of their lives trying to fit in in two different cultures and essentially failing. It's beautiful, it's heartfelt, and it marks the birth of a truly great new talent in the region. Another feature that is expected to be crowd pleaser is Arab and Tarazan Nasser's Reza Mon Amour. It's their second film after uh, the Grade, which was uh, screened at Cannes uh, Semaine de la Critique. The new movie premiered in Venice last year, uh, where it premiered to very favorable reviews. And um, the movie stars uh, Hema Abbas, um, the most uh, famous Arab actress right now, and probably one of her best performances. The film is a minimalistic comedy romance between a fisherman and a tailor in Gaza. And um, the hook, or like the, the main exciting incident of the film, is that the fisherman he finds a Greek artifact, um, and this finding uh, spurs a, a very absurd Kafkaesque uh, exploration into the bureaucracy of the current um, Gaza government. 
uh, funny, moving in parts, and very subtle, with a very interesting um, visual structure. Uh, the film is definitely will will make lots of waves this year as well. And last, but certainly not least, uh, another Egyptian movie that um, got the Cannes label last year that was uh, included in the Cannes lineup but has not been uh, screened yet to a public audience. And that movie is the sophomore feature from Egyptian director Aitim Amin, and it's called Saad. Saad is the story of a lower middle class uh, young woman who dies a very mysterious death and her sister who tries to go to Alexandria to trace a man who may or may have not been her lover and try to figure out uh, or try to pick up the pieces of what happened to her sister. Um, it's beautiful, it's heartbreaking, it's also a piercing portrait of Egypt after 2013. This is one of the few films that captures the pulse of daily life in Egypt of the different the class difference between life outside the urban sites in Egypt and inside a place like Alexandria, the fading metropolis with its various hypocrisies and various um, laws. Also, like it's one of the very few movies that captures the way people talk uh, the nat with great naturalism and great aptitude. And the film is entirely um, uh, acted by a cast of non-professional actors, handled with great sensitivity and offering some rare insight into modern-day Egypt. It's certainly one of the most anticipated Arab uh, films of 2020. Um, yeah, there's a lot more films that we're expecting this year. So, And we hope that uh, some of the films will end here in the stand for all of you to watch. Thank you all. And uh, yeah, for more information on these films, you just Google me and find uh, um, extensive, in-depth uh, insight into many of these movies and many of the um, other forthcoming Arab movies coming out this year. Happy New Year again.